Today's episode has been brought to you by Schedulicity. Welcome to episode 103 of the Connected Yoga Teacher Podcast. This is our third episode in the Yoga Studio Business mini-series, and I'm so glad you've joined me today. We started this mini-series back in episode 101. I shared what I learned as the manager of a yoga studio. In episode 102, Steve Hart shared how his yoga studio has become successful and how he believes that a mission statement and core values contribute to that. Today, I'm so excited that you get to meet Shelly Warren because as your yoga business grows, you will need to at some point hire and nurture a team to support your business. As an example, you might hire an accountant already to help you with year-end tax preparation. And if you're thinking, I'm way far away from hiring a team, that is what I used to think until my business grew and it was necessary for me to do so. Because as we know, hiring can be tricky and overwhelming. Shelly Warren joins me on the podcast today to share her wealth of information about hiring, building, growing and nurturing your team as you grow your business. So whether you're thinking about hiring your very first team member, and this might mean that it's someone to help you with a website, someone to help you with your copy, someone to clean your house so that you have more time to work at what you love doing, or if you already have a team supporting you in your business, this episode has so much insight into leadership and team building. Before we dive in and meet Shelly, I want to say a shout out of thanks to Sarah. Sarah left a review on our Facebook page and she said, the podcast is an excellent resource for yoga teachers. Excellent interviews, encouragement, and education. Keep it up. Thank you so much, Sarah. We plan on keeping it up. Thanks for taking the time to leave a review. Also, Brigitte left a review saying, I recently had a consultation call with Shannon and I can only say positive things about it. She has a way of asking the right questions, of saying the right things to trigger a deeper understanding of what I want to do and who I want to be. The homework she proposed is very useful and continues to help me develop my ideas following our conversation. Brigitte goes on to say, I went from having ideas all over the place and not finding a way to channel my creative energies to feeling focused and having a better sense of where I want to go in the future with my yoga workshop project on the history and philosophy of yoga. Shannon helped me to declutter my mind, which makes me feel calmer and generally happier with where I'm taking my workshops. Thanks, Shannon, for making us feel all more connected. Thank you so much for leaving that review, Brigitte. Also, listeners, stay tuned. This is actually coming together as a podcast episode, kind of the consultation call that we did, the story behind this, and so I can't really share it all now. We need to get on with our episode for today, but just stay tuned and know that sometimes these connections turn into more than just a review or a consultation call. Sometimes they turn into another podcast episode. If you are brand new here, let me take a little moment to tell you, my name is Shannon Crow. I'm a mother of three, a yoga teacher, and a trainer and consultant working for yoga teachers. I really get what it's like to be in the jungles of yoga entrepreneurship. And that is why this podcast is here for you. It's here so that you can connect to information and inspiration every single week. The podcast is here for you when you're on the go and you're traveling between classes or you're busy tidying your house or walking your dogs. I know you guys are taking me along on the go to many places. And then when you get back to your computer, the show notes are there for you. So today's show notes are really worth checking out. They're at theconnectedyogateacher.com slash 103. Shelly has left a link that leads to lots of templates and downloads for you if you are interested in hiring or building or nurturing your team. One more note before we meet Shelly, let's hear our hot tip of the week from Emily at Schedulicity. Hey there, Connected Yoga Teachers. This is Emily with the Schedulicity Hot Tip of the Week. When you create and market yoga teacher training through Schedulicity, we can help you capture your students' impulse to book. Once you've created your workshop, it's a great idea to enable the payment add-on and choose to collect a deposit, full prepayment, 
or a credit card number at the time of online booking. This way, that money will go into your bank account when a client books, or if they don't show up, you can charge them based on the no-show policy you've created. Knowing that payment is taken care of allows you to put all of your mental energy into helping your students become the next generation of excellent teachers. Thank you so much, Emily. I actually just did a review of the payment options for all of my services at the end of 2018. I edited some of them because of how my business has grown and how I need things to be very automated now. So I like that I could choose. I could choose a little less automation at the beginning and now things are running smoother and I know what I need for the admin side of things. So thank you so much, Team Schedulicity, for having these options available. As I said, I'm super excited to introduce you to Shelly Warren. Shelly is a team and leadership coach who helps business owners hire and nurture their dream team. She is a natural connector, a fellow Canadian. She's an expert team builder and an incredible coach with over 26 years of experience at Procter & Gamble, where she led technical teams to deliver multi-million dollar projects. If you're a regular listener, you've heard me talk about Natalie over at BizChicks, who is a business coach of mine. Well, Shelly is the chief people officer and part of the executive team of BizChicks. She leads masterminds and strategy sessions that focus on strategies for growing and managing teams. Shelly also hosts her own podcast called Stacking Your Team. What I've learned as a business owner is that you can't grow a business without a team. And I wouldn't say it was easy for me to learn this. At some point, you'll have to hire team members to support you in the work that you do. Shelly is just the expert who can help you navigate the complexities of finding right fit people to join your team. She talks about the onboarding process and cultivating a strong team. She even coaches me in this call about how to nurture my own team. I'm thrilled to be able to share some of her wisdom and insights on this episode. Welcome to the Connected Yoga Teacher Podcast, Shelly. It's great to have you here today. I'm so happy to see you. I know we get to see each other face to face and chat. Super excited because I feel like I listen to your podcast, uh, the Stacking Your Team podcast, and you have such amazing comments in the Biz Chicks Coop as well as we're friends on social media and I see all kinds of things there. And I've had to reach out to you, I feel like twice this month about um, issues around building a team. And so I'm, I'm just excited that our yoga teachers get to hear from you today. Well, I'm happy to connect with them too. And I love the fact that you're a fellow Canadian. I feel warm and fuzzy anytime I get to meet another female entrepreneur that's from Canada. There seems to be such an overwhelming presence of U.S. women business owners online. We don't often bump into Canadians. So when we do, our maple leaf pride kind of shines through, I think. <laughs> I know. I live with an American. Uh, Sean, uh, my partner, is American, and he's always joking around like, you know, what is the population of Canada? Like, you can't see it represented the same way, Shannon, because you don't have as many people here. Um, but it's true, and a lot of our listeners are also from the U.S., and it, I think it's really fun, too, that we can make connections to various countries and all over the mm. world, and then and then really find those things like being a fellow Canadian is, is fun. So I want to dig in and ask you some questions today about building a team. And I know a lot of our yoga teachers have been reaching out and saying, when do I know when to hire? When do I hire someone to help me? And what could they help me with? And then we have other yoga teachers who run yoga studios. So they're right in the midst of it. So if we start at the very beginning what is the first aspect? If we are looking to hire someone, do you have any tips around that? Like before we even reach out and put a, put a job out there? Well, I think the first thing you need to ask yourself when you feel that you need to hire is to stop, get centered and ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Because oftentimes we can get shrouded with what we see other people are doing, right? So if it feels like it's really hot and sexy to hire an online business manager, 
because that's like the hot thing right now. But in reality, your business does not need an online manager manager right now. Like you may need some help with some admin, but people who really think, wow, I need an online business manager. And then they go through the process of trying to find one. And then they find one. Oftentimes they're finding them and bringing them on board too soon in their business. And then that feels like a burden. It's a burden for pay because now you have to pay this person every month. And typically an online business manager is on a monthly retainer. So now you're kind of on the hook for this monthly bill. And then the other thing is, if they're really great at what they do, they're going to get bored really quickly because you're not serving up work for them or enticing work for them because you ended up hiring them too soon in your business journey that you don't really even have that work ready for them to do yet. So the first thing I would ask people to do when they think they need to hire is really stop and think, why am I feeling like I need to hire? And if it truly is some of that like compare-itis, like you're comparing yourself to everyone else online, then you just need to dial it back and ask yourself again, why am I feeling like I need to hire? And if it really is because of overwhelm, and many business owners are overwhelmed right now, and it's typically because they're trying to wear 17 hats and they're trying to do it all, that kind of overwhelm is real. It's very real. So then it comes to a point where you need to still stop, get centered and ask yourself, what would give me the most relief and the most joy to stop doing right now? Right. And if if the answer is email gives me anxiety, right? Like if people are opening up their inboxes and they feel the anxiety coming on, then there's a clue. There's a symptom, right? There's a reason to look at having someone come and join your team that can manage your email for you. Or if, it, if you do have some sort of an email process where you're actually reaching out to your client's base on a regular basis and the stress becomes not knowing what to say to them or how do I stay connected to them? How do I know I'm even serving up anything that's of interest to them? then that's something that you want to consider, having somebody come in and do that piece for you. So we hire to free our minds and ourselves up to be able to do the work that we are intended to do. When we start out in this entrepreneurial journey, you're just doing it all. You're just doing it all. And then you, you wake up one day and you think, wow, I'm more burned out now than what I was when I had my J-O-B. And that's not really what you intended, right? You intended when you left your traditional workplace and went into the entrepreneurial world, most people took the big leap because they had intention of slowing down, getting centered, following their purpose, doing their life's work, having joy every single day. But oftentimes what ends up happening is the exact opposite. And it's typically because they're trying to do too many things. That's not really their strengths, but they feel compelled to do it anyways. And then oftentimes it just become just overwhelmed. And they, I know some people who actually fall out of love with their business because it's feeling more like a hardship than a joy. So when we think about hiring, Come to center, ask yourself, why am I feeling like I need to hire? And then look at if these are the things I'm feeling and I know for sure that this particular aspect of my job wears me out. I'm not having time in my life to do this and that, which was really my intended purpose. If you're spending so much time in your business and not enough time nurturing and developing the clients that you were so delighted to be able to serve in the first place, there's a key right there. Yeah. I think you're speaking volumes to our yoga teachers. So I know yoga teachers will graduate out of their first yoga teacher training and they're just super excited to share yoga, to practice yoga, and then take what they're learning and and bring that to their community, either one-on-one or in groups. And then what bogs them down is exactly what you said, like checking email, sending out a regular email, updating social media, um, creating graphics, making a poster. These are all things that I think that 
we don't know the amount of work that's going to go into selling our yoga when we're in our first yoga teacher training. Sometimes it's not even covered. Sometimes there's maybe an hour or a few hours of business practices, but that's it. (laughs) So um, I love how you said, though, that it can look sexy to to hire a business manager. Because I do hear a lot of buzz now, like people are calling it different things like an online integrator, uh, Mm -hmm. business manager. And you kind of feel like, oh, this will be good. Someone will just take the reins and and then it'll make my life easier. But you're saying, look for what's really stressing you out. And I love how you said, come to center and get grounded about it first. Our yoga teacher should be good at that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because I just find people stay too too long up in their head, like they're up in that head space. And that's when those thoughts can really just start to jumble us up. And we really are actually listening to and paying attention to outward signs and outward thoughts and outward pressure. When in reality, we need to come to center and ask our own self, what's going to work best for me at this stage of my business? Knowing that you will have aspirations, right? We look out into the world, especially you can look out into the world and look at yoga teachers out there and be totally inspired by what they're doing and be able to use them as guideposts. You know, at some point, I would love my business to be like hers. At some point, I would love to collaborate with her. I would love to learn from her. But in reality, let's just look at ourselves where we are right now and realize that we're all on our own journey. And you will move through the development phases of your business at a time that best fits you and what gives you joy versus thinking, oh, I have to be on that hustle track, you know, where I've got to just hustle, grind, hustle, grind, be the boss, you know, all those kinds of terms that we hear in the online (laughs) world. Whereas in reality, that type of language and that type of philosophy does not fit all of us. And that's okay. You just need to find what does and stick with that. Right. Now, I love that you say this because I want to tell our listeners where this comes from. You managed a big team at Procter & Gamble, right? How many people were you in charge of hiring and managing? I I hired and led many, many teams, but the biggest team that I had at one given time was 60 people. And (laughs) having that many people to look after and care and nurture is you're pretty much doing that 90% of your job is actually people development and having those one-to-one conversations, being aware of who on your team has desires, you know, who on your team needs a picking up today, who on your team needs another opportunity to shine who on your team needs more guidance. Like you're really becoming, you're, you're actually leaning in on all of your senses, like all of your intuition comes into play because you've got to be able to quickly notice, recognize and act upon vibrations that you sense, tone, body language, facial expressions. Like you've really got to lean into all of that stuff because oftentimes in the workplace, it's very uncomfortable to somebody to just come right out loud and tell you what they need. Right. There's fear, there's fear of judgment. There's fear of competition. You know, there's fear of looking dumb. Right. 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 So you as the leader, you've got to really be able to pick up on all the signs that these people are, the outward signs that people are giving you, be able to read them correctly and then be brave enough to act upon it. And believe me, people appreciate that, right? People really appreciate the knowing that you have where you create a space for them, where it's safe for them to say whatever it is they need today. And oftentimes, it's all anyone's really looking for is to be seen and heard. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that's so true. That's the foundation, Yeah, you had a great episode on best bosses and I was on that Mm -hmm. talking about exactly that. My boss would leave and then say, great job today, Shannon. You'd think it would get Mm -hmm. old, but it was really nice to hear that every single day. Let's back it up a little bit before we get into sort of how we take care of the people that we hire. Let's back up to, do you have any tips on when we go to hire? I know that one saying, I think I learned from you is like, 
hire slow and fire fast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hiring is a project. Okay. Right. Many people think, oh, I, I need to hire somebody. So I should be able to find someone and get them here and get them on board within two weeks. You could do that. That could happen. But in most cases, that's not what's going to happen, especially if you're looking for someone who's going to be a great fit for your organization. We can all go out and stand on our, down on our main street and yell out that we're hiring and have a bunch of people come up and be interested in the job. And we could pick one and hire them within the hour. We could all do that. But that's not what you want to do because you've spent a lot of time develop, developing your business, your brand, and your culture. And every single person that comes to join becomes a key player. They're either going to help move the organization forward or they're going to actually stall. And you want people that are going to come in and they're going to help you move your organization forward and run alongside you. You don't want people that you have to constantly have to be turning around and dragging them up alongside you or dragging them up alongside where the customer needs you to needs them to be. You want people who can intuitively look and see who you are, what you're trying to do, what kind of clients and customers you're serving and how best can I always be out front of them so that they're always delighted in what we have to offer. So hiring definitely becomes a project because when you think back to the very first thing I said, which is come to center and ask yourself, why do you even feel you need to hire? That's going to take some time to really sit with it and be able to plot just even on a piece of paper, what are all the things that I'm doing right now that I know are not my strengths or not where my business needs me to be? Because Oftentimes too, we do things because we're good at it and it's easy for us. Right. But if you're the CEO of your business, there comes a certain point in time where it is not smart. It's no longer smart for you to be spending your time over in that arena, even though it is easy for you and even though you do like it. Because you need to be over here developing your people and developing your programs and developing your business. So you're going to make that list. And then once you have that list compiled, then you can stop and think to yourself, okay, here's the kind of help I need, but how do I attract someone that's going to be a great fit to come and join me? And that all comes down to writing that compelling job description, (laughs) right? We've all seen job descriptions out there that are just like a laundry list of here's what I need. Here's the things I'm going to expect you to do. Apply here. Right. I don't know how exciting that is for you, but that would, not be an, that would not be a compelling reason for me to want to apply to go work for that leader or in that workplace. I want to be inspired when I come to work. I want to know that when I come to work, every single thing that I do is actually bigger than me. It's creating something bigger than me. And I want to be able to see how my tasks and my actions and my ownership areas are impacting others and helping this business grow. So for yoga teachers who are looking to have people that want to come and join your organization, the one thing that I would be making sure I include in that compelling job description is that you describe your yoga philosophy. Because we all know there's many different forms of yoga. There's many different forms of customer base that love yoga for all different reasons. So let's tell your story. Talk about why you fell in love with yoga, why you're so inspired to teach it. What's the philosophy behind your business model? What does your space look like? Who are your typical clients that come and take your classes? What are the kind of guest teachers do you have on your roster that come in to offer up new and on-trend methodologies within the yoga world, right? Like you're going to want to tell all that because that person that's thinking you're coming to join your company, even if they're coming in as the admin, they're going to want to feel that they're part of something really amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so true. And I love how you brought this forward. And I feel like when I was managing different yoga studios, there were three of them and we were hiring teachers 
it was almost like we came from this mindset of like, let's put it out there and see who shows up and then see how they fit. But we had some train wrecks in that. Like it mm-hmm. was, it was, um, you know, we hired one teacher and she started talking to the whole class. It was a movement-based class. It wasn't yoga. And she started talking to the whole class about what they should and shouldn't eat. And we had like four four people come back and say like, I feel like I went to yoga class or to this movement class and got shamed. And I, I yeah. don't want to go back. So I think when you say, let's put it in that letter. So do you do you get people to look at their mission statement and their values, core values, and include that in there? Yeah, you really want to be able to tell the story as to why this opportunity is so amazing. Okay. But it's amazing for the right kind of people. So you're going to tell the story in the hopes that you're going to actually repel the people that are not going to be a fit for you. And that's okay because that's actually making your work easier for you. Right. Right. Instead of having people kind of, well, it's kind of interesting. Maybe I'll check it out. No, you want people that are going to read that job description, follow the process to apply, including all the detail, and then be wanting to follow up with you because they're just so darn excited for the possibility of maybe coming and joining your organization. And then when you talk to them and find out why, they'll tell you. And this happens to me all the time. Like I will, my very first question when I interview someone is what compelled you to want to apply for this, for this role? And 80 to 90% of the time, they'll say to me, it was that job description. Right. (laughs) I just love the way you described what your workplace was like. And oftentimes people are drawn into those things because they come from a bad experience, right? They come from a place where they felt like a number, right? They come from a place where people didn't even know their name, right? They come from a place where leaders don't even talk to them unless something's wrong. Mm -hmm. So when they see a job description that describes the average day in the life of the Connected Yoga studio, right? The average, here's what a day in the life would be like coming and working and and joining our team. And you describe that in a way that is meaningful to the right people. They will, they will be attracted to it and they will want to apply. And then others that read through that will go, no, this is not for me. That's too chill. It's too chill. I'm fast paced. I'm, I want to hustle. I want to know I'm driving against this metric and that metric. And you know, I really want to get out there and really bite into something. Those people are going to say, no, this isn't for me. And that's okay because now you're not going to waste your time or their time interviewing them. I feel like you already have a template for this, correct? For the job description. Okay. So Mm -hmm. I'll make sure to link to that in our show notes uh, and to give our listeners that so that if they're feeling like, okay, I need to see an example of, of what this would look like. Um, so also one piece that I have gotten from listening to you and the work that you do with building this team is be really fussy on that intake. So just a reminder that Shelly works on the BizChicks team now. And part of that work that I'm fascinated by is that when someone applies, you have like this little list of things that they need to do that are really nitpicky in that application process. And I actually use this the last mm-hmm. time that I put a job out there and it worked so well, but it was hard to execute. So for example, it was <laughs> like, you know, don't send me an email, make sure you fill out this form instead and do it in this way. And all questions have to be answered, like all of these things. And I put a few trick questions in there. And if people weren't um, answering them, like in the, in the way I was uh, like they had to do a little bit of research and digging to do that. Mm-hmm. So if they didn't, it was just like, mm, that application is done. Like, I don't even have to look at it. Do you want to explain any more about that? I'm not sure if I have. <laughs> yeah. So the whole idea there is that you would p- build in a couple of triggers in the application process. And one of the easiest triggers to build in is to tell people to apply for this position, forward your resume and letter of intent by an email using the subject line, yoga is, makes me feel so bendy. Right. 
Like whatever you choose. Yeah. Whatever you choose. So now you open up your email and you see all these inbox messages that are coming through. And the only ones you're going to look at are the ones that have the subject line, yoga makes me feel so bendy. Those are the only ones you're going to click open and look to see what's inside. All the other ones, you're just going to delete. Now here comes the hard part. (laughs) For many heart-centered leaders... (laughs) <laughs> they'll see these applications come through and they'll be so compelled to go and click and open it. And then they'll start reading through and they'll start learning about this person. And then they'll start thinking, well, you know, maybe she was just distracted and, you know, something just got in her way and she didn't you know, realize what all the detail, you know, we just want to give everybody an opportunity, but here's, here's where, you know, you just got to draw a line in the sand. The CEO does not have time to go through every single one of those applications. You're looking at the best candidates. You want to consider bringing in the best candidates for an interview. And the best candidates are people that can follow instructions. Right. And people who are going to put their best foot forward as an interview. Because, or like applying for the job. If they can't put their best foot forward when they apply for the job, when will they? Right, right. It's like due date time. Oh, I like mm-hmm. this a lot. And I have seen what not doing this also does in many different jobs. You know, when we used to hire at... <laughs> Actually, it wasn't so hard for me when I, I managed a large animal vet clinic, co-managed it. And I remember we we put out this... That was when we were looking for paper resumes and they would put me in charge because I was like, nope, spelling mistake. Nope. I think yeah. it's ugly. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we were like, Shannon, yeah. just pick out like the top three to five of these or something. And, and, uh, it, it was easy for me knowing like, I want someone who's going to be as attention to detail as our team already was. So that's good. Yeah. Know. And if you don't need anybody that's attention that, that has, a certain level of attention to detail, then fine, that's cool. But if your business requires you to have people on your team that are going to follow processes and standards and job aids and checklists and intake forms, and you know, if there's processes built into your business that requires people to do whatever they can to eliminate errors, and that usually equates to attention to detail, then you need people on your team that naturally have the ability for that attention to detail and who can follow instructions. If you don't need that, then don't ask for that kind of a trigger. Right. So you had said, make this list of things that we don't enjoy doing. And here's Mm -hmm. my struggle in this. If I look at it and I know, okay, email gives me anxiety, One, I have a hard time passing that off to someone else. I'm like, well, obviously it must stress everyone out. You know, I don't want to do it. And so how would I write an inviting job description when I'm not super passionate about those things? Can you touch into that mindset? Yeah. So first of all, you have to realize that things that you really dislike doing, others jump up out of bed to go and do. But everyone has their own likes and dislikes. So what you can do when you create that job posting is give it to another trusted person within your peer group. Could be a family member, could be another business owner in your local community who you really respect her or his opinion. Have them have a look at it and see if it if it's ringing true for them. Because as you're writing that job description, you can see in the template that um, I'll provide for you, I use language that says you are excited with the prospect of coming up with fresh email content every month to share with our subscribers. Right. (laughs) Right? That doesn't mean you, Shannon, is, but this person is. Right. Right? So it's really just how you word it that way. Or sometimes there's also a couple of examples in there that says, you feel joyful taking care of items that other people typically are overwhelmed by doing. 
Oh, that's good. Right. So, oh. so that could be things like, let's say you have, um, so I'm trying to think back like in a yoga studio, you'll have inventory that you need to manage, right? So you'll have your mats, you'll have your blocks, you'll have your, your CDs or your audio equipment. You'll have your, um, your reception area, I'm sure has an intake desk, all that kind of stuff. So this person would be the one that would make sure that everything is put back to base at the end of the day, right? right. So it's the whole idea of you set the studio up for success for the next day. And as I'm, a, I'm also sort of assuming that you've got teachers that are, you know, coming in and leaving and like ships that pass in the night, right? People are just coming and going and hosting, hosting events. But at some point, everything does have to be put back to base because you know, as your customers come in, like whether it's they're coming to the washroom, whether it's the f- 60th person that's come to the washroom that day, the washroom needs to be put back into some assembly that feels clean, hygienic, welcoming, peaceful. So somebody needs to take care of that. There are people in the world who are on that. Like they see it, they feel it, they get job satisfaction of knowing that they can go in and do a quick refresh of your bathrooms so that every single client that's coming to use your washroom during the day, for it, whether they're there for a half hour class or whether they're there for a whole day workshop, that when they walk into that washing facility, they are delighted with what they find there. Mm-hmm. This is so true. <laughs> I was leaving the yoga studio last night. What I love to do before I go is line up all of the bolsters so that the zippers are not facing me. Mm -hmm. So we have this little joke in our studio that it's only the OCD teachers that do it. But it makes such a difference when you walk into the space. It really Mm -hmm. does. (laughs) And so I enjoy doing that. It's like part of my ritual and routine leaving the space. So you're right that everyone would like doing something different. It's like some people love accounting and numbers Mm -hmm. um, and... Checking email, it's hard for me to believe that someone else wants to go through my email and sort it, but you're you're making me hopeful. <laughs> Some people love to write copy. Other people love to organize, whether they're organizing things electronically or they're physically organizing things. Some people love the whole idea of a startup and a shutdown list, All right? So here's the things that we do at the end of the day to shut down our operation in a really smart way. So that when we come in the next morning and we, we pull out the startup checklist and we go through that checklist, everything comes up in a real pleasant way. Right. right. So that's everything from sweeping out the front steps to turning on your air diffusers. Right. Putting everything into play so that as the, your team and as your customers are coming in, they get that sense of... Mm, I just love coming here. <laughs> right. right. That's that's what you want. And it's it's really because you're putting all that thought and care into your startup checklist and your shutdown checklist. And those startups and checklists are used in all types of businesses, from the factory floor to the auto mechanic to the airline, right? Everybody has a startup right. and a shutdown checklist. And there's no reason why a yoga studio doesn't have a need for it too. You're making me think that I need one for my own. <laughs> Self. <laughs> okay, what do I have to start with, Shannon? Actually, we have some of those. Like, we have some little checklists that are really mm-hmm. helping our team. Like, this is what happens next. This is who's in charge. So, especially with the podcast, that's helpful. So, once here's my issue as someone who has now hired a team, we have a great team working for us, and I didn't even think that was going to to happen. But everyone has their specialty. You know, we have our our show notes writer our audio editor, and then our VA. So for yoga studios, it's going to be very different. It'll be, you know, front desk, yoga teachers, maybe someone who helps them with their accounting or someone Mm -hmm. who helps them with advertising. How do we look after these people? Like once they're on our team and here's a place to start with it. Like, I don't know how many team meetings we're supposed to have. Like it's the same thing in a yoga studio as it is within a virtual business you barely see your team. I feel like everyone, like you said, their ships in the night and they're just passing. Maybe they meet up for workshops, but what does it look like and how often should we be connecting with that team? 
Well, I'm not a fan of having a team meeting just for the sake of having a team meeting, right? No one's really into that. But you definitely need to get on some type of a drumbeat so that everybody knows we have a team meeting the first Thursday of the month. You could host it before the studio opens or or immediately after the studio closes. But I would expect it to be mandatory attendance because you as the CEO... It makes your life easier if you're going to share any form of communication to share it once. Okay. Versus having to share it six or seven times because then we can actually drift off the main messaging points and then we just get a watered down message. The other thing I would encourage you to do is come up with a way so that all of your teachers, everyone connected to your team, can stay connected online. So whether that's through Voxer, whether you create a Facebook group that's just for your team, and that way your team can share updates, ask questions. You can go in there and share as well. Some people um, like the platform called Slack. Yes, we just started using this. Mm-hmm. I'm just yep. learning. So, yeah. yeah, so that's that's a tool that you can use as well. But having a team meeting... So let's take you as an example. So you list your team are virtual team members. Mm -hmm. We're all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I would think to start that you would host one team meeting to just bring everyone together and introduce everyone so that everyone actually starts to see all the key players that are associated with the business. And what that does is it up-levels their level of respect that they have for each other, especially if there's a chain of command in terms of a workflow, right? If I owe you something and I'm always the ones, like I'm a constraint for you, right? now that I've met you and I've talked to you and I understand who you are a little bit more, I am going to pick up the pace in terms of what I owe you so that I'm no longer constrained. And a lot of times that happens simply by meeting the person and having a conversation and putting a name to the face. Right. This is so true. We did a team meeting. We did a couple of them a while back uh, and we did it via Zoom. Mm -hmm. We all met there in video so we could meet each other. And we talked about not only, because I realized that the Connected Yoga Teacher team, that work is just a tiny piece of their Mm -hmm. overall work. So we, I also invited them to talk about the other things that they were doing. They were promoting each other and they actually started referring work to each other as well. Yeah. Yeah. The more people who know what each other is doing, the more transparency you have. And then the more people will actually start to look out and support one another. Yeah. So if you have a virtual team meeting with your, I'm going to call them like your back office virtual team, I would suggest that you start having one of those at least once a month so that you can talk about new projects that are coming up, right? If you have seasonal workshops that are coming up or you have some kind of launch that's coming up or there's a new series that you're launching on the podcast, you're going to want to give people a heads up for that so that they can plan in accordingly for that. Your yoga teachers are a separate part of your team and I think they will gel together hosting a separate team meeting with them, but the same presence, you know, the same presence is there, right? Let's talk about what's coming up. What can we get a jump on ahead of what's working in the business right now? What's not working in the business? Who needs help? You know, what looks like help to you? What are, you know, are there any, any type of gaps in the process right now? Like, is there any questions that are left unanswered? Are there workflow processes that are kind of janky? You know, you're not feeling like it's flowing enough. Let's talk about that. And then understanding what each unique teacher brings to the party, because that's when those referrals will start coming along. That's when the testimonials will come along. And that's when that whole level of respect for one another is really going to elevate because they start to know each other as people. They're no longer just seeing a name on a schedule. Yeah. Like they're actually seeing this person. So if a yoga studio is hosting this once a month, my, my initial thought is that yoga teachers are going to be a little reluctant. Does that yoga studio pay for their time or is it just it's part of the job? 
Well, I think what I'd like you to do is to host one, host one of those meetings, see how it goes, like what the vibe is, see how many people are engaged in the conversation, right? Because it can't just be you leading this team meeting. Like you're going to kick it off and you're going to have an agenda and you're going to tell them in, in advance what the, you know, what's the intent of the meeting and here's the agenda. But then you're also going to tell them that you're going to leave time at the end. And this is an open floor conversation for them to be able to talk about whatever they want to talk about. And then to close off that meeting, I would be asking them, you know, what worked really well for you in this team meeting? And what did not work well for you in this team meeting? And you may be need to be prepared to hear things like, I would have preferred to come in on a Saturday morning and do this. Right. Or um, I feel it was too rushed. I would have liked to have more time to talk about this, this, and this. Like they will give you the feedback. And then the other question for them is, how often would you like to have these meetings? Right. Right. Like let them have a say in that. And they may say, I think we should be doing this. We should kick off every quarter with one of these team with one of these right. team meetings. And that's when you can say, you know what? I love that idea. Let's make sure that if we're going to host one at the beginning of every quarter, that we really maximize the time that we're coming together. Let's have a really robust agenda. You know, can I have some volunteers who would like to lead this part of the agenda? Or do we can we do a mini training now that we're all coming here together? Is there something fresh and exciting that's happening? like within your expertise area that you want to be able to take 10 minutes and just give us a mini training on so that we're a little bit more aware of what's happening, what's on trend. That's a great idea because yoga teachers are always going out either taking online courses or different Mm -hmm. trainings and they could bring that back to the studio and and everyone could learn in that time. And then you can help talk about it as well. As so you're look as you're selling or referring classes and referring teachers to clients, you can talk about what she's, you know, she's now qualified in the latest version of this, or she just got qualified and certified in this particular methodology. Because now you're aware, you know her, you know what she's up to, and therefore you can sell her more easily and refer her classes to clients. But the issue that I find with people that are hosting these team meetings is if there's not one person that is spearheading it, right? So that would be you. So it's on the team calendar. They know in advance when it's happening. Someone on your team is creating the agenda and that other people own certain aspects of the agenda. That's how you create the excitement because you want to have this atmosphere where people wouldn't dream of missing it. Okay. Because there's just too much awesomeness happening in this team meeting. There's no way they're going to want to miss it because if they missed it, they're going to feel like they left, they're left out of the loop. Right. But by yeah. having a collaborative feel towards it in terms of here's what we're going to talk about. Here's about how we're going to really take advantage of this time that we're coming together. And it could only be an hour. Right. But you can you know, pack in a lot of goodness in an hour. Right. With different people leading different components of it. Maybe some snacks, some chocolate. Chocolate's always yes. good. Yeah. <laughs> Free trade for or sure. chocolate. Yeah. And for <laughs> you, this is also your time, Shannon, to be able to take some time at some point in that agenda and acknowledge your team. Right. And, and acknowledge the good work that they're doing. Read customer and client testimonials. You know, talk about the state of the business. Let them know that the target that you had for this quarter, the team has surpassed it. Let them know that you're looking to be able to kick off 2019 with a bang. Let's come up with some new programming ideas. Or if there's a particular niche of people that you want to go after and introduce this yoga studio to them and introduce what you have to offer to them, have your team come up with a plan to help you do that. Right. This is good. And so then along the way, also what I've seen in different yoga studios is there can be this point where people kind of hit, like either they start to get bored with things or, you know, maybe they're not always showing up to class or it's not, there's not that much of an incentive. Is there some way to check in with our team, see how they're doing? I know in different businesses, they might call this a performance review, like where it's just really one-on-one it might sound very scary to yoga teachers or to studios, but are there some ways to do that? 
Sure there are. So the easiest way to do that is to not do anything formal. And when you see the person, make sure that you stop what you're doing and you pull them aside and just simply check in with them and say, oh my gosh, I'm so happy I saw you today. I was thinking about you yesterday. I'm like, Can we grab a few minutes? I'd love to check in with you and just hear how things are going. Right. So then when they go, yeah, sure. Then you pull them aside. Maybe you go to the break room. Maybe you step outside. Maybe you go to a nearby park and talk. But the premise of that for you is to open up the conversation for them and your job is to listen. Oh, this is good because I would, I was assuming you were going to say like, pull them aside and tell them all the things that are going well and all the things that you see that need improvement. But you're saying, just sit there and listen to this person. Yeah. You open up the conversa- conversation by saying, tell me how, how's it going? What do you feel is really working for you? What's, what's the most exciting thing for you that's happening right now at the studio? Like, Ask them questions, not the yet standard yes or no questions, right? So you want to ask a question that kind of compels them to tell you a story. Mm-hmm. And then your job is to just to sit and listen. And then you can follow up that conversation. Like you, the more they talk to you, the more you're going to say to them things like, well, you know, I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that twice this month, I've had people reach out to me and tell me how much they love your class. Right. But then you have to, that feedback is good. But better feedback is when you say, twice this month, two people have reached out to me and told me how much they enjoyed your class. They love your style. They love the way you're non-judgy when when they walk in the room. They love the fact that even though they're beginners, you treat them like they're advanced team members here in the class. Right. So you're giving them the basis of the feedback, but then you're also reinforcing the behavior that your customers love and that you want to make sure they keep doing more of. Right. Okay. So you kind of find, polish off those strengths that you see and like enable them to be able to see it as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Yeah. And then the way to wrap up that conversation is to just tell them a few things like, you know, here's a few things I really appreciate about you. And it can be as simple as I love the fact that you're here 20 minutes every time before your class. Right. It doesn't matter if you're teaching a morning class or you're teaching an evening class. We know that you're going to be here 20 minutes prior to your class so that you can get in the zone, get centered, and get in the space that you need to be in order to delight the people that are coming to your class. And then you can also say to them, I love the fact that your time cards are always done on time, no errors, or, you know, pick a few things that this person is doing really well and just make sure that they know that you appreciate that about them. And so for us working virtually with a team or say, if we don't see those yoga teachers very much, like even if we have a workshop and we have a teacher coming in, how would we reach out to them? Would we do that via video? Like it's going to be less like just bumping into them and saying, Hey, let's go for a coffee. Any ideas around that? Yeah. You can use a loom video. Okay. So Loom is free. It's so super simple. And it takes the email up to a whole nother level because they actually get an email with the link. And when they open the link, there's little Shannon, like in a little circle, and she's talking to you. It's pre recorded. They can save it. They can go back and listen to it a million times if they need to. You know, they can save it into their warm and fuzzy file. So when they're on a day where they really need a boost and they really need to be reminded that they are enough and they are making great impact in the world, they can go back and reopen that message from you and see and hear and feel that validation all over again. Right. This is really super important as a person. I know myself leading a team, like we're all kind of head down doing our work. And I wonder how often do I need to be doing that? Like, would I do that Loom video once a month for a virtual team or yoga teachers who I'm not seeing all the time? Is there a magic number? Or is it just when, or is it when they come to mind? Like, No, it's not when you come to mind. Like part of being a CEO is this is part of your work, Shannon. Like this is part of your work now. So you need to get out your calendar and plot in times that you're going to meet with people, that you're going to follow up with people with an email. You're going to create a Loom video for this person. And prior to even 
executing on that thought and that idea, there's going to be some time set aside where you're going to have to do some research because you might want to, yourself can do this or someone on your team might be able to go through online and they're going to capture, they're going to screenshot all those testimonials and put them in a file for you. So that when you're going through and you're going to create a Loom video for one of your teachers or you're going to send her an email or you want to have a talk with her before her class, you're going to want to be able to show like solid examples. Like here's some screenshots, Emily, from your raving fans just in this past month. Here's the screenshots of the testimonials that have come through the Facebook page just this month alone for you. Right. And you just put those, plunk those into an email or put them on a PowerPoint slide or, or, you know, print them up and put them, if you have like a back room where all your teachers get, you know, like they have, maybe they have a private dressing room. I don't know. I've never been to your studio, but if you have a place that's private, that your team kind of collects and gathers, you could print those out and put them on a bulletin board there. It's very inspiring for other people to be able to see you know, what's the word on the street about Emily as a teacher? And then they're all high five and Emily. Like, way to go, Emily. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And what that does, is it creates a healthy bit of competition amongst each other for others to think, wow, I really do like the way Emily teaches. I've heard that about her before. Maybe I'll consider adopting some of that style into my next class. Right. Oh, that's a really good point. I know that we used to have feedback forms at the studio Mm -hmm. and people would fill them out downstairs. So they would go downstairs just before they leave. They had the option to fill it out there. We wanted it to be anonymous and Mm -hmm. uh, because it could be good or bad, like just let us know. And uh, we kept getting this one comment that the washroom floor was cold because it's like stone. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But mostly it was feedback about the teachers and their classes. So that'd be a great place to sort of collect those. Or maybe there's an email or a survey that goes out and and to bring that in. I like this. I like that it's on the calendar and the, that you said it's part of our job when we start building that team. It really is part of your job. It's And it's part of your ability to nurture a team so that they want to continue to come and work alongside you, right? One of the worst things that a CEO or an owner of a business can go through is that that whole feeling of it's just a revolving door. I've got team members, I'm I'm onboarding them and then they're quitting and then, or I'm firing. I'm onboarding them and then some are quitting and then some I'm firing, right? That whole churn, it creates so much distraction in your business. Ideally, you want to have a team that is focused, set, happy, to come to work every day and that can see themselves in your business for the long term. Right? This is not a stopover for them. They love it so much. They're going to want to stay with you year on, year on, and where they become an extension of you and your brand. And that's really what's helping you continue to grow and scale your business is this cohesive, consistent roster of amazing teachers. Right. It's so true. It's so true. I love how this started all the way from sitting with yourself and thinking, okay, what do I want this to look like? What do I want? in? how can I convey my mission, my values, the companies, the studios, all of that? And, and what do I really need to start to look at that? And then how that plays out as you build your team. This is super helpful. Is there anything else that you can think of that you want yoga teachers or yoga studios to know as they build those teams? Well, the one thing I would kind of offer up to you is if you have yoga teachers who are struggling with getting any feedback from their class, right? Oftentimes people don't, aren't forthcoming with feedback Mm -hmm. or they think, well, they don't really care what I, they think, or they know I'm happy. I keep renewing my subscription. So they know I'm happy. One of the things that you can do is you can have someone on your team, maybe it's your your front desk person or your office manager, go through your list, like go through your customer base and look to see who are the people that are continuing to come back and renew their programming every year. Reach out to them and invite them to provide feedback to you with a gift for doing so. 
Oh, that's nice. Right? So give like them a free class. Give or them a free, free class, class or give them some swag. Right. <laughs> right. Give them something because what you're trying to nurture there are raving fans. Right. Right. So you want those raving fans who are typically the ones that are doing the word of mouth advertising for you. They're also being like almost like poster children for you and your brand and the outcome. The yes. outcome of here's how healthy you could be. Like we all know those people that yeah. we see them and we ask them, okay, what is your secret? What are you doing? You look amazing. You're, you're always so happy. You're vibrant. Your skin is glowing. Tell me, I got to know what is your secret? And then they'll say, I don't do anything really special. Yes, you do. And you dig, 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 dig. And then they'll say, well, I have yoga as part of my daily practice. Right. And then the next question is, oh my gosh, really? Where do you go? Where yeah. are you taking the classes? Right. So it's those raving fans that you want to keep nurturing. And those are the ones that you really need to instill in them that they are a big, big part of your success at your studio. So every chance you get, you want to make sure that you're giving them eye contact, talking to them in the hallway, asking them, what, would, what kind of class would you like to see next? You know, yeah. what, what are you looking for in your next piece of your yoga journey? Is there something you've heard about out there that you'd like us to consider bringing in? You know, you want to bring them onto the podcast. You're doing any kind of a VIP scenario at your studio. They're definitely getting a handwritten invitation. You know, if you've got anything that's new that's come into the studio, whether it's a new type of mat, a new type of cushion, a new type of anything, they're getting an email letting them know. Right. These are really the ambassadors. They are the ambassadors of their brand. And all you really need in any business is call it like 25 raving fans. Right. You can nurture 25 raving fans on a consistent basis. So it's not hot and cold or seasonal. Right. Right. This is something that's just part of the way you do business. Those 25 raving fans will get you your next 225 raving fans. They will do the work for you. That's so true. I see this also in yoga teacher training. Like people will take a yoga teacher training and then others are asking them, where did you take your yoga? You know, and can Mm. you tell me about that? So, or if they take a workshop, you know, it's that word of mouth. We used to have a student um, come to this one studio that I worked at and he like we told him we were just going to get him to walk around with cards because he was a walking billboard for our studio <laughs> over and over he was telling everyone about it so it's it's fun we but that go- same concept of building raving fans within your customer base mm-hmm. you're going to concentrate and take action on building raving fans amongst your team okay right? your teachers you want your teachers to be those ambassadors that are out in your community because they're the ones that people are looking at and saying, wow, you're just, you're, you look so amazing. You look so healthy. What is your secret? What is going on? You look so centered. You look so calm. You look so fulfilled. You look so purposeful. What are you doing these days? And they'll say, Oh, I'm, I'm teaching. Where, (laughs) what do you love about it? You know, like that's because you want, team members to be able to attract the next team members right who are going to be a great fit for the existing team that you already have right and that starts with the existing team oh yeah right so if your existing team is happy and love what they're doing and feel like they're very you know living a life on purpose that they're really having a larger impact in the world that they're being able to play to their strengths get paid for their brilliance creating more and more connections in the world, they're going to talk about it. Yeah. Because they're just going to be so joyful about it. And that's how people are just going to keep hearing that story, becoming intrigued, wanting to know more about them, wanting to know more about the studio that they serve, wanting to know, well, hey, is there any other opportunities? Are they hiring right now? Are they looking for any kind of guest speakers? Do they have some kind of theme coming up next quarter that I can maybe fit in and do a class about? Yeah. Is Shannon looking for podcast guests? Is there a way for me to introduce Shannon to another connection that I have locally who I think has a complimentary event that they're hosting? Right, It's all those kind of conversations. And when you dial it all back and you look at what was the root cause, 
of all that ripple effect, it's your team. Right. Oh my gosh, this is so good, Shelly. If our listeners want to hear more, because you have a whole podcast full of resources that they can tap into, what's the best way that they either get in touch with you or hear more about building and really nurturing that team? Well, they can tune into the Stacking Your Team podcast, which drops every Tuesday. And if you go to bizchicks.com, that's B-I-Z-C-H-I-X.com slash hiring, you'll get all of the latest and greatest PDFs that we've created for anyone that's looking to hire. Oh, good. So they will all come to you in one little free bundle and you can just roll around in that and (laughs) use it however you need to. And if anyone's looking for an opportunity to just come and have me work with them individually and help them work through a team issue or a leadership issue or a hiring or a firing issue... You can come to bizchicks.com and just click the work with me button and you'll see me there and you can just book a strategy session with me. So worth it. Thank you so much for this today, Shelly. I will um, include all of those links in our show notes for sure. Oh, I'm happy to connect with you and your team and your listeners. I have uh, friends of mine that actually own yoga studios and another couple of friends of mine that are actually going to start a yoga studio. There you go. This so will be a great episode. <laughs> yoga is very much on my mind these days yeah. just because I'm so excited for them to watch them build businesses where they really can just do their life's work. Like that's, I can't even describe it in any other way. Yeah. Super important. And I love how you brought in all of the practical stuff so that we can um, do that, do exactly what you said, our life's work. Like Mm -hmm. we, if we put all these systems in place and, and deal with the business stuff and hire out what we don't want to be doing, then we can really show up for what we do want to be doing. And isn't that the whole purpose right there? Isn't that your ideal life right there in a nutshell? It is. It Mm -hmm. is. All right. Well, it was great talking with you today. You too. I hope to see you again soon in person, I hope, one day shortly. I know. Soon. We will do that soon. Okay. Bye now. Bye. Well, Connected Yoga Teachers, how was that? Are you feeling all ready to dive in and hire a team member? Or are you thinking of ways that you can look after and nurture your existing team? I would love to hear your key takeaways. I know that a couple of my key takeaways were this really looking at why we want to hire someone first. So I love that Shelly added in this pause first and think about, do I need to hire someone? Why do I? And really listing out all of the tasks that you are doing now. I think this is the one key takeaway that I would choose as homework. If I could pick a homework one. Maybe you thought of something else and if you have, you know, hop to it. This one though is hard for me. Maybe it's hard for you as well. I did this at the end of 2018. I listed out all of the tasks that I'm currently doing and I started to put little marks beside them, like the ones that I don't like doing, the ones that I would really like to pass off to someone else and the ones I love doing or the ones that I can't pass off, like doing this podcast. This podcast is my voice and I need to be here, and this is something I love doing. If you're like me, sitting down to write this list gives me a little bit of anxiety. I think, well, instead of writing this list out, I could just get to some of these tasks. But it makes such a difference. And I have to say, after talking with Shelly, I'm even switching my perspective to looking at tasks that I might add to my list that might not even be for me at all. So one example of this is Pinterest. I've thought of adding Pinterest to my marketing, but I have zero interest in Pinterest. So if I add it, I want a team member in charge of that completely. I don't want any part of it. Also, with regards to my own business, I've started to look at what can I really keep passing over to other people so that I have time to create more content for the yoga teachers out there because that is the work I love doing And very honestly, that's the work I get paid for. People hear my content, they hear me sharing, and then they want to book with me. I also love how Shelly shared how important it is to share your story, your yoga story, and your 
kind of what's at the very core of your yoga story to your team members. And this really goes in line with what Steve talked about last week in episode 102. So go back and have a listen to that if you're looking at your mission statement and your core values. One thing I'm definitely implementing in my own business, thanks to Shelly, is at my next team meeting, get ready for it, Suzanne, Samantha, and Crunch, hold me to this one. I want to ask my team what worked well with our team meeting, what didn't work well, and how often would everyone like to have team meetings? I feel like there was so much in this episode. So if you are taking one thing, if you have a key takeaway, just work on one thing for right now. Before I sign off, I just want to find out if we can meet up in person face to face. Did you hear that Schedulicity is sponsoring a gathering for us in Toronto at the same time as the Toronto Yoga Show? There's a private gathering. You are welcome to attend. Tell your yoga teacher friends who live in Toronto, who are coming in for the conference, or who are able to travel in just to even meet up. It's happening Friday, March 29th, and you can find out more about this on our website. In our Facebook group, there's an event there, and I will be sending it out in an email. I'm super excited that at the Toronto Yoga Show, I'm actually going to be doing interviews with yoga teachers. So if you want to be interviewed and share your key takeaways from the conference, I would love to talk to you. Also, I'm sharing two trainings this year. One is Yoga for Pelvic Health. That's not until the fall, November, but coming up very soon, I will be in Bermuda and Meaford, Ontario, sharing Mama Nurture prenatal yoga teacher training. These are two trainings that I'm super passionate about. These are really my niche offering in terms of training, and I would love to connect with you at one of them. Huge shout out of thanks to our Connected Yoga Teacher team, Samantha, Suzanne, and Crunch, and also to our sponsor, Schedulicity, and you, listener. Thank you so much. It's time for me to sign off, but I want to know what will you be doing this week to stay connected? So maybe this is to your own yoga practice, maybe to your community, maybe to your friends, maybe to yourself. I would love to hear about it. If you are on social media, tag me and use the hashtag the connected yoga teacher, especially on Instagram. It is so fun to connect with you online here each and every week with the podcast. I just want you to know I'm super grateful for you. Take care, connected yoga teachers. See you back here next week.